Good day guys, today I'm going to share with you how I built my uh, large crosscut sled. This crosscut sled is, uh, I built it specifically to cut uh, large panels. Um, I've got a Craig top track here with the, the Craig stock and I use the Starred measuring tape so uh, I don't need to measure anymore when I do crosscuts. Um, this is a very, very precise sled and I'm going to show you um, the technique I used to build it, why is it so precise. And um, after I show you how I built it, I got some video footage uh, while I was building it. Uh, but I don't have too much video footage, I regret it, I should have videotaped more while I was uh, building it. Uh, but anyways, without further ado, I'm going to show you how I built this sled. Okay, this sled here is constructed with Baltic birch plywood. And the reason I use Baltic birch plywood is that it's very stable during humidity ch changes. There's uh, 13 plies here. So I think it's a very good material choice to make a sled. Um, the dimensions of the sled All right, it's a little over four feet. By a little over 24 inches. So as you can see here, the runner is uh, also made out of Baltic birch plywood. And I use a dado blade, as you can see here, it's uh, recessed right into the three quarter inch thick Baltic birch plywood. As you can see the runner sticks out here a little bit. And um, again I use Baltic birch plywood for the runner because if I would have used a hard wood in the summer when it's humid uh, it, probably the wood would swell up and it would be too tight in the groove. So um, I won't have that problem with the Baltic birch plywood. Okay, so as the, the fence, all I used is a piece of Baltic birch plywood. And because I used the top track in the instructions, uh, I needed to be uh, from the bottom to top at two and a quarter inches. So I used another piece of uh, Baltic birch plywood, and again, I used a dado blade made a groove, so it's recessed in. Now, a lot of sleds, they use, for the stop, they use a piece of wood, something like this. You know, they'll use plywood, so it, it's as straight as possible, but it's never perfectly straight. It's very hard to glue that up perfectly straight. You, most likely, you're, it's, it's going to be wavy, maybe five thousandths of an inch, maybe more. Uh, but by cutting a piece of Baltic birch plywood with all the plies, this is roughly five inches wide. And uh, what I use is the, my uh, saw track with the, the Festal tr uh, saw. That's incredibly straight cut. That, that track I paid almost $600 for it. It's nine feet long. But there's a reason why it's so expensive. It's incredibly straight. Probably no less than two or three thousandths of an inch off. So uh, it, it made this like a really, really straight edge. So when I built that sled after I inserted the runner, um, this sled was oversized a little bit, so I just made a cut. So now the saw blade is sitting right next to the plywood. Okay, for the fence, it's, um, it's very hard to calibrate the fence perfectly square, especially if you use these type of screws here, you can make the five cut method. Um, I'll show you briefly after, but I'm not gonna make a video on that uh, because there's, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that show you how to, to square up a sled using the five cut method. Uh, but the problem by using these screws, 
you're going to cut your, your piece of wood, you're going to make five cuts, and you're going to check with your caliper, and it's going to be out of square. And then you can't use the same screw because it's going to try to go in the same hole. So you got to put another screw beside it. And by the time you get this, this fence perfectly square, you're going to have a zillion holes because of all the screws from trial and error. So what I've done is I've put an insert here. Okay, so it's got thread on the, end, the outside and it's got machine tread on the inside and I used a machine bolt with a large head on it and on the fence I, I drilled an oversized hole so I can have like a little bit of play here so I've done this at one end and at the other end I put another treaded insert with a machine screw so then what I've done is I, I've put the fence flush to my plywood here and I've made the cut using a five method cut. I used a piece of plywood that was about 24 inches by 24 inches. And then I was out by about 30 thousandths of an inch over a length of 24 inches. But when you use a five method cut, it compounds the cut. So even though I was out 30 thousandths of an inch, I was actually out four times less than that, so roughly seven thousandths of an inch over 24 inches, which is incredibly precise. But I wanted to make it more precise. So what I've done is I've loosened one machine screw just a little bit, still kept it tight. Loosened the one at the other end. And then I've used a feeler gauge. I'm going to show you after later in the video how I did this. And uh, I just moved that end of the fence by maybe three thousandths of an inch. Or four thousandths of an inch. And I think it was a bit too much. So I tried a second time and I was about five thousandths of an inch off over the five cut method. Which means I was just a little over a thousandths of an inch off but I thought I could do a little bit better so I loosened it again I used a filler gauge uh, and I just moved it by like one thousandths of an inch at the end and I tightened my two machine screws again and then I tried the five cut method by then my piece of wood was maybe 20 inches by 20 inches and then I checked with my caliper and I was out, it was jumping between one and two thousandths of an inch. So probably around uh, 1.5 thousandths of an inch. Again, that was on the five cut method. So divided by four. So uh, <laughs> on over 20 inches long, I was out like half of one thousandths of an inch, which is crazy accurate. So I stopped right there, really happy with that. So anyways, uh, now I'm going to talk to you about this uh, Craig uh, top fence that I bought. So this is a aluminum extruded fence made by Craig. Um, you can buy that on Amazon. The measuring tape here I bought, um, it's a Starrette measuring tape. It's a peel and stick. Got that on Amazon as well. And then here I got the Craig stop. So let's say you want to make a bunch of repetitive cut at 26 inches. You set that at 26 inches. And then let's say you got a longer piece to cut. All you need to do is flip that. You can cut your longer piece. So this is really, really handy. So no more measuring. So just to, to show you uh, if you want to buy the, the Craig top, top track on Amazon. So this is just uh, type that on Amazon. You're going to find it. Um, I got another track here just because I'm going to make another sled for long narrow pieces. So these are just uh, star red tape. You can get the, the Craig tape also. So it's uh, peel and stick tape. You just cut it to length. And this is your, your Craig uh, swing stop. I would like to mention too that uh, to cut a fence like that at four feet in length, 
on a regular table saw, it's really hard to get it perfectly straight. And when I say perfectly straight, I mean for the fence to be within a thousand or two thousandths of an inch. Um, to cut that on a regular table saw, you'll probably be at least out uh, by at least five thousandths of an inch or more. So there's only two ways that I know how to cut it perfectly straight. One is to use a Festal track saw. This is a very expensive uh, track saw, but it's very precise. Okay, and another way uh, would be if you know someone who's got a, um, a sliding table saw, a good quality sliding table saw, you can get a really straight edge on that also. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, I've got a high quality jointer here, and with that jointer, I can make a straight edge incredibly straight, uh, but not with plywood, because what happens is that with plywood you got laminates okay so you got the long grain and you got then the, the short grain it, it it alters right so what happens uh when you're planing um against it through the layers that goes against the grain there's little fibers that lift and um, that prevents you from from jointing a, a straight edge. Uh, from experience, I've tried over and over again. You're gonna do a good job, but it's not gonna be perfectly straight like a regular piece of hardwood or softwood. So that's the reason I didn't mention the, the jointer earlier. Like I said, the track saw or a sliding table saw will give you a straight cut. Okay guys, this is the end of my cross-cut sled here. So let's pretend you do the five-cut method and you're out, uh, let's say, 40 thousandths of an inch on your piece of plywood, let's say it's 24 inches. So divide that by four, because when you do the five cut method, it, it compounds uh, the error. So um, divide it by four, so now that means you're truly out 10 thousandths of an inch. But this, this fence here, is double the length, so it's uh, it's 48 inches long. So that means now you have to adjust this here by five thousandths of an inch. So let's say you could you put you have a gap here of 20 thousandths of an inch. Okay, so now you f you find which one that uh, would be 15 thousandths of an inch and you un unscrew your your machine screw here and tap it and adjust it till your your gauge of 15 thousandths of an inch gets flush between your square and the plywood and retighten it and then try to do the five cut method again that's how i did it i think it's probably the, the fastest way to do it all right guys so this is what i was talking about here the five cut method so you take a piece of plywood, maybe 20 inch by 20 inch or so. You don't want to be a, get the plywood too small because then you're going to suffer from accuracy a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five. So you start with the one, all right, and you make your cut. Then you might be out uh, five thousandths of an inch, let's see. Then number two, you make your cut. Now you're out ten thousandths of an inch. Number three, you're going to be out fifteen thousandths of an inch. Number four, you'll be out um, twenty thousandths of an inch. And then you make your last cut, number five, and maybe make a cut the strip like one inch wide or so. So let's let's pretend this is the the cutoff strip that you cut here and this is how you measure here with with your caliper you measure one end right so let's say you got uh one inch and and five thousandths of an inch and here you have one inch and twenty five thousandths of an inch all right so you know you're out twenty thousandths of an inch but in reality you're only out five thousandths of an inch. So again, th this is what it's called the five cut method. So the runner here that goes in the slot, it's really tight. Actually, I kind of have to push pretty hard to get through it, but this is good. I'd rather it tight than have some 
loosen it that way I can uh, have more of a precise cut and the way I've done it again I've, I've cut this strip here with my uh, track saw and I've cut it oversized a little bit then I, I took the runner to the thickness sander all right so what I did is I was uh, taking little bites just a little bit at a time just a little bit and I would try it until it fits snug in the uh, slot of the table saw.